today's video, we're taking a look at Slurpees. What happens when you freeze dry them and can we make our own? Slurpees, slushies, whatever you want to call them. These are from 7-Eleven, so I think they are the actual Slurpee brand. If you're not familiar, soda is taken and put in a machine and frozen while it's stirred, and you end up with a light, fluffy, or a soda packet. It's like a packet of soda flavoring. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, sugar. I don't know if they, I don't think they use the pre-made. I think they use like the carbon dioxide, water, and the syrup the same way a soda machine does. But the idea is the same, is that it's frozen soda. Today, we got four different flavors of it. We got cherry, blue, <laughs> pina colada, and Coke. And we want to see what happens if we freeze dry these Slurpees. So. Here's the basic idea. We're gonna get four flavors of Slurpees from a 7-Eleven, and we're gonna see what happens if we freeze dry them all. Then we're gonna try several different methods of making our own kinds of Slurpees to see which one is the closest and the easiest. We've got our freeze dry trays. We're gonna put it on there, throw in the freeze dryer, take a look at what happens. While they are freeze drying, we are going to try a few different methods of making our own sort of Slurpees. I like it. A while ago, Grant showed you how to make some sort of slushy stuff by taking bottles of soda and putting it in the freezer. I've gone ahead and thrown six bottles of Coca-Cola, all the same size and temperature, into the freezer, but I staggered them 15 minutes apart. So I have six bottles, and when we take them out, it should be timed so that we have from two and a half hours in the freezer to about three hours and 45 minutes in the freezer. First thing we're gonna try is an ice cream maker. These are pretty basic. They have an aluminum container. You fill a lot of the container with whatever you're trying to freeze. And then it's got this nice paddle. And then all of this around here, you fill with ice and rock salt, this ice cream salt specifically. And as the salt dissolves the ice, it gets hyper cooled and then it just keeps spinning around and all of that heat gets pulled out of the soda by all the cold. And well, hopefully it works with soda. I know it works with cream. That's how you make ice cream. We're gonna try it with soda and see if we can get slushies. Normally you're supposed to put your container in the freezer till it's really cold, but we're just gonna cheat. I think they would recommend this if it were an option for everyone. I'm basically just gonna keep doing it until it's so cold that I can't really hold on to it anymore. That's probably much colder than any freezer has ever gotten it ever. This little thingy that makes the whole thing turn. But first we need salt and we need ice. Yeah. Now are we supposed to be layering the salt or anything? Yes, okay. so that's why it was about six cups to start. Okay. These giant chunks are really throwing off my groove. All right, so now we just let that go until it has frozen in there. I like it. All right, we have a couple other things we can try. Uh, we've tried them in the past some of them, but I want to okay. do them again. I want to try making slushy with dry ice. Okay. I want to try making slushy with liquid nitrogen. Okay. And then I want to sort of simulate the same bucket salt ice method, but with the Ziploc bags. Okay, so, so it's a very homemade method. Yeah, you take a small Ziploc bag, fill it with whatever you're trying to freeze, put that inside a bigger Ziploc bag that's full of ice and salt, and just toss it around for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to work pretty well as well. So well, I know we've done it with ice cream. I don't yep. remember if we've ever done it with soda I've to make like a slurpee. I've never seen anybody do it with soda. So I think we should try it. I think I will try the liquid nitrogen using some Dr. Pepper. I'm gonna take it a step farther. It's not gonna quite be a pure slurpee. I wanna try mixing some whipped cream in with it so we get like sort of a creamy slurpee. Sure. The cream and the Dr. Pepper are a little separated at the moment. We'll see if that continues as it freezes and stirs. I have never once in my life measured when making ice cream this way. Like the ice cream part maybe, but not the salt and ice. I feel like you're mad scientisting to my little house on the prairie. This <laughs> is not fair. Really hard to see what I'm doing, honestly. It just stays so full of vapor that I don't really know where I'm at. Look at this, look at this. Very close to a slurpy consistency. You have made a slushy. Mm. Pretty good. This is complete. My Dr. Pepper whipped cream slurpy. Your what? Slurpy, slushy, mushy. Mushy, you're mushy. This is, yes, it's called a mushy when you combine Dr. Pepper and cream, I decided, and when you use liquid nitrogen to make it. I wish we could have all of them finish at the same time to compare. That's not gonna happen. This went way faster. That one's gonna take some amount of time. I'm gonna try Rawr. a dry ice one. I don't know how long the one in the canister's gonna take. I'm gonna try that one though, because it sounds delicious. 
a light creaminess. It's a mush. Liquid nitrogen was a success. Now we're going to do dry ice. I'm gonna be using this strawberry. And as a backup, I have some cherry syrup that's meant for snow cones. <laughs> to make it a little case stronger? The, yeah, in case the flavor isn't quite strong enough. But I'm not putting any cream in this one, so it might be fine. It did start leaking quite a bit. Hopefully I, we only had soda go out and not salt water go in. I can only hope. Now it is much more liquidy than yours, but it does look like a semi-melted slushy. And I do think they add a little bit more sugar when they make these. Just like a higher syrup concentration mm -hmm. than regular soda. Now that took three times the amount of time it took him to make one with liquid nitrogen. No one's surprised. It's really uh, easy to get your hands on ice in most places. It's really hard to get your hands on liquid nitrogen in some places. So if you want to try it, it takes about that took me about 10 minutes to just slush it around in a couple of bags uh, with some salt and some ice. Yes, you can absolutely make a slushy out of a soda. It's really good. I just want to show that I'm done with the dry ice one. Powdering the dry ice seems to make a very big difference. Yeah, that went super fast. That's pretty good. Uh, flavor is decent. It's not strong, but it's decent. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of this cherry syrup concentrate. So we're going to have strawberry cherry. Uh, I'm gonna add some to the squirt too. I've also added some dry ice. Now that we know the consistency that that made, I'm just gonna mix it up a little. Very good. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty much just like a Slurpee. It looks perfect. Mm, that's good. Root beer, that is, yeah, that is that's really, really similar. Really, yep. Texture's almost perfect. Which makes sense because the way that Slurpees are made is a cooling chamber with rotating paddles in it. So it's being made almost the same method. It's lost a lot of carbonation, but again, we don't know all of the ingredients that are being put in it to make these slushies, so. But this is about as close as you can get. I do think, again, that they are using a slightly higher concentration of the, the soda flavoring. Mm -hmm. More syrup or more sugar, more both. This works really well. This is like the $30 version of an mm -hmm. ice cream maker. And of course, you can make ice cream in it, so that's another bonus. Yep. Our Slurpees have finished freeze drying. Have they? They are interesting. So we've made freeze dried soda in the past. And as we've just been discussing, Slurpees appear to be soda with maybe a little extra syrup in them. I think the blue has an artificial sugar in it and not corn syrup. Okay. And so I think we're getting a different texture as a result. It didn't turn into the hard goo. It actually is no. still a little bit runny. Yeah. Slow, like it's a syrup, but the rest of them have solidified beyond the point of syrup. Okay, so looking at the results of this is interesting because three of them appear to have already frozen despite still being pressured. And not being in the, the order of times, yeah. you know, smallest to largest amount. This, this is in there the longest. It is not at this point frozen. So let's just start with the least amount of time in there. All right. Carefully open, pour, see if it does the thing. So 1045, this has been in for two and a half hours. Oh. And we are getting some slush. Apparently, our freezer is quite cold at the moment. Originally, when Grant showed making these, he said three hours and 15 minutes for his freezer. Mm -hmm. I guess this freezer is different. It's also not freezing the it's way this way. one did yeah. with more time in there. But when I give it a shake... It's still not freezing, but oh, well, a little it's... bit. Shaken with less pressure in it, it did start to freeze somewhat. A little bit. This is, so I think what we're learning is there's some inconsistency that can happen. <laughs> Frankly, I'm just going to assume that the freezer we are using does not perfectly evenly cool everything. I, I feel like this side was closer to the cold air than this side was because uh -huh. we had nothing like a linear progression in how well things worked and I thought everything was even pressure, even volume, because they were all unopened. Mm -hmm. They were all refrigerated, but not frozen before they went in. And I was very careful. I just added one every 15 minutes. I thought we would get like no slush to slush, or no slush to slush in the middle, and then 
too cold, like it was frozen or something. You know, if you're doing this in your freezer, I would say you definitely have to figure out your freezer, where you're putting the bottle and how long you're putting the bottle in. Slurpees, you can definitely make some at home. <laughs> Homemade ice cream maker works wonderfully. If you have access to dry ice, that works very well. If you break the dry ice up, just be very aware. You do not want to eat it with the dry ice in it. If it's in your mouth, you could freezer burn or even frostbite bits of your mouth. It will freeze bits of flesh. It will hurt. If you were to swallow it, it could be like hospitalization level of damage. So if you're using the dry ice, just make sure that it's completely all stopped. There's no bubbling, no hissing. Probably every spoonful even you'd want to just double check like anything in there. No, I'm good. All right, good. <laughs> if you have liquid nitrogen, that works great. It's less common to have liquid nitrogen. If you don't have any of these things and all you've got are some plastic bags and some ice and some salt, you're still good to go. It works. Yep. I've done it with ice cream before too. It's pretty good stuff. Guys, that's it for today, but we've always got cool stuff coming out. Hit the button right there to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss one of these videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.